Hello, this is Chris Minnick with Webucator. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a simple undo in JavaScript using immutable.js. This video was inspired by a blog post by Tam McWright, which is available at the URL shown here. If you want to create undo and redo features in a JavaScript application, you have to deal with managing history. It may appear simple, but it presents a particular challenge. In his post, Tom shows an example of a simple application that has an undo and redo feature. Here, you can add dots to the screen and then use undo and redo to step through the history. The principles of undo redo are data is immutable. It should never be mutated in place. Changes to data are encapsulated into operations that take a previous version and return a new one. History is represented as a list of states, with past on one end, the present on the other, and an index that can back up into undo states. Modifying data, such as undoing and then adding new dots, causes any future states to be thrown away. Unlike strings and numbers, objects and array in JavaScript are mutable. That is, if you create an object, reference it as a different variable and modify it, both references point to a changed value. For example, now here, both myself and someone else now have the name value equal to Christopher. Arrays are also mutable. Common array operations like sort, push, and pop all change arrays in place. For example, immutable.js makes immutable data simple by providing custom data structures for unchanging data which can replace collections and objects. Using immutable.js, we can say var myself equals immutable.map name Chris. And then immutable provides methods that create new modified objects. The result is that someone else can reference data in the old object, and only the changed properties differ. Immutable objects are nearly impossible to accidentally mutate. You can use an operation to take a version of the data and return a new one. And you can keep a history list using a list with an index. We we'll use a variable called history index to store the history index. Now you can use operations to append new versions to the list of history. Increment history index by pushing a new version on the stack using a helper function, such as this one. Then you can write operations like change height like this. If the value of history index is zero, then we're at the beginning of time. You'll usually only want to display the undo button when history index is greater than zero. You can use a simple test such as this one. And then likewise, you only want to show redo when you're not at the end of the history index list. So you can use the following test. Using these techniques, you can implement a simple undo redo feature, such as the one shown in Tom's example. You can view the source for this application on JSFiddle at the URL shown here. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks again to Tom for the inspiration. Check out his blog at macwrite.org for more JavaScript tips.